All right, welcome back to Mr. PL. So that was Unit 2, Topic 3, Lesson Number 4. So we're going to start off with substitution. Taking H equals 3 and solving each problem by substituting that in. So that would be 3 times 3 minus 4 e equals negative 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So that is a true statement. That is equal. Uh, 3 times 3. 3 on this side equals 9, and 2 times 3 plus 2 minus 1. So, got to do what's in, when we're solving an, an expression, you got to do what's inside the parentheses first. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 minus 1 is 9. That one is also true. And the last one, 2 times 3 minus 3 equals 3 plus 6. Well, 3 plus 6 is 9. And the other side, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. That is not true. All right, so it looks like the first two were true, and then the last one was not. So substitution, which is going to be something we're going to do in this lesson as well, which is substituting to find the x and the y-intercepts in standard form. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, two new constraints today, feeding time and pampering time. So I'll let you read this on your own, but basically when it comes right down to it, they're going to spend 12 minutes per day for each cat, which is pampering time. So I guess they need, oh, this is feeding time. I'm sorry. So they got to clean the litter boxes and stuff like that. And the dogs need 10 minutes twice a day. So that's 20 minutes per day for the dogs to walk them. And pampering time is going to take, let's see, well, they have eight hours, by the way. I forgot about that. Uh, so they also have eight hours a day in order to spend for pampering time. So there's two of them. So if they work eight hours, each person is really what it comes down to. It's not, they're not working 16 hours a day. That's way too much time. So that would take 16 minutes of brushing each cat and 20 minutes per day bathing and playing with each dog. All right, so it looks like we have all the information that we need in order to write the equation. So things that I noticed. Something I noticed was that these were in minutes and this was in hours. That's a major, major thing that you need to take notice in because we need to do a conversion. We want everything to be the same. Uh, I also noticed that there were some numbers in here. Those are kind of like numbers that are throwing you off because six minutes twice a day is actually 12 minutes total. So those numbers were not that important. All right, so I wonder... Um, if, are these, what are these equations going to look like? So when I graph them, are they going to be the same? Are they going to have different rates of change? Are they going to have the same y-intercepts? These are all things that I would wonder about. All right, so feeding time. Now I'm going to have to kind of flip back and forth here because I, I don't remember these numbers as well. So 12 minutes a day per cat feeding time. And going back... It's 20 minutes per dog for eight hours. So plus 20 minutes per dog has to be less than or equal to, so they don't have to spend all eight hours. Now here's the tricky part. So it's eight hours multiplied by 60 minutes per hour means that's 480 minutes per day. Okay. And do the same thing for pampering time. Looks like it's 16 and 20, 16 for cat and 20 for dog. 16 per cat plus 20 per dog. So it looks like there isn't a whole big difference between those two. Also has to be less than or equal to 480 because it also said 8 hours as well. Double check just to make sure. Yep, there it is. 8 hours. Okay, so we've got our two equations. And so the next thing we want to do is think about graphing them. Well, what will we do? If we want to turn these into slope-intercept form... Now, I'm going to go back and do that right here. So if I want to turn this into slope-intercept form, then I want to solve them for y. So in this case, what are we making x and what are we making y? So that's a good question. So in this case, let's make cats the x and dogs the y. Cats are the x, dogs are the y. So I'm solving for dogs. So I'm going to subtract 12c from both sides. And that's going to give me 20 dogs, or in this case, I'm going to use y, because I've changed now dogs to y, equals negative 12x now for cats, plus 480. Divide both sides by 20, and I've got y equals, or is less than or equal to, 
Uh, 12 divided by 20, well, if I divide both those numbers by 2, simplify them, that would give me 6 over 10, but those still can be divided by 2, so that's a 3 over 5, so that's negative 3 fifths x. 480 divided by 20 is going to give me what was 5 in every 100 times 400, so that's 20, plus, yeah, I'm kind of talking to myself here, so 20, 40, 60, 80, plus 4 more to go, so that's 24. Okay, or you got a calculator, 480 divided by 20 should be 24. All right, same thing for this one. If I'm changing standard form into slope-intercept form, once again, so I'm going to use this as x and this as y. First thing I want to do is subtract 16c from both sides. That gives me 20y is less than or equal to negative 16x plus 480. Next thing I want to do is divide both sides by 20, and that gives me a pampering time is going to be y is less than or equal to 16 over 20. Okay, that can be simplified by dividing by 2. That would give me negative 8 over 10. Divide that again would give me negative 4 over 5x, because both these numbers can both be divided by 4. That divided by 4, that divided by 4. 480 divided by 20, so that's also, once again, going to be 24 as well. Okay. All right, so they are both 20, so I'm just double-checking myself. This one was 20 for the dogs, and this one was also 20. Okay, so those are correct then. All right, so I could graph those on here, and you've seen me do that in previous lessons, so I'm going to save a little time here. And then you're going to take solutions that you think do work and substitute them in and see if they do work. So that was what you're trying to prove in this case. So if we've got numbers that are in the 24 is the y-intercept for both of them, is 24 going to fit? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it looks like if I go by 1s, 24 is not going to fit. So what if I go by 2s? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So that should work. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. All right, so if I want to graph these equations, I'm going to start with this one over here. Uh, 24 is the starting point, and negative 3 fifths. 22, 24, negative 3, 1, 2, 3 fifths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you might be wondering, what am I doing right now? Well, I'm using the slope negative 3 fifths. Negative 3, that's rise over run. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3, over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what you should have is a straight line. And that one represents feeding time. All right, so that's feeding time. I'll, what I'll do is I'll just write it down here. And pen is not working right now. So now I'll just change colors. So now the other one, blue, is going to be pampering time. It also starts at 24 and goes down negative 4 fifths. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like they're gonna be pretty close. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. All right, looks like it's like this, and it's below both of them. So the answer is, I'm gonna break out the highlighter, put it in purple. Remember, this is all of the space that meets both criteria. Because what's in this little sliver meets the criteria of feeding time, but it does not meet the pampering time. So, yeah, I know I just put the exact same. I put them both on the same graph. So I just did. Yeah, I know that was probably a future lesson, but I'm showing it to you now. So I basically have graphed both graphs on the exact same graph, both equations on the same graph. So you can clearly see that the purple highlight is the only part that satisfies both. All right. So. There's another way of, saw of of graphing when you have standard form, and that is by finding the two intercepts, which I know I've covered in previous videos. Put 0 in for x and solve for y, and put 0 in for y and solve for x, and that'll give you your two intercepts. And once you have two intercepts, you can simply connect those two intercepts, and you've got your line as well. All right, so I want to get to the homework. Plan A, uh, text messaging, gives you unlimited text for $10 a month. Perfect. So 10 times x, x is the amount of months. I believe that's what we're trying to do. Or no, I'm just going to say it's $10. All 
X is going to be the amount of texts that I send. Now, Plan B is the difficult one, so I'm going to go to Plan C, which is the easier one. No monthly fee, but they also char they charge you ten cents per text. So X represents the amount of text that you send, but you don't have to pay any money. So it looks like this one's going to be a better plan if you send a lot of text, and this one might be a better plan if you send just a few texts. But then there's also Plan B, and this is the difficult one. You have to pay five dollars a month plus. You're going to pay five cents for each additional month, so that's five cents times x, the amount of um, text that you send, minus 60, because those are the amount that they give you free. Now, keep in mind, there is a little problem here. This equation doesn't work if you don't send 60 texts, because in the real life, if you don't send any text, they're not going to deduct five cents. They're not going to give you a credit of 60, so 60 times five cents each. So if X is anything less than 60, then you have to just kind of wipe this out. All right, then you have to pay $5 plus whatever, because these are free, basically. If you send less than 60 texts, it's free. So if you send 30 texts per month, which plan is the cheapest? So plan A would be $10. Plan B, if you send 30 messages, like I just said a second ago, 30 minus 60 is negative 30. They're not going to refund you money. So that means you're going to have to pay $5. And then plan C, because you're not paying anything because the first 60 are free. Uh, if you send 30 texts times 10 cents each, uh, let's see, every 10 texts is a dollar, so it looks like that's going to be just $3. So it looks like plan C is the cheapest for number five. For number six, what is the cost of each of the three plans if you send 50 texts? Well, plan A, uh, 50 messages per month, still costs $10. Plan B still costs five dollars because you're still not even sending the sixty text. And Plan C, fifty text. That looks like that one's gonna be five dollars also. So it looks like these two are going to be exactly the same. All right. Once again, thanks again for watching. I know I went to twelve minutes again. Uh, please give it a like if I helped you learn something, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again.